Good morning. You're watching WCVB News Center 5 Eye Opener. A sunny start to your long weekend, but I'm tracking a few showers. The best time to get outdoors. Racism at the Museum of Fine Arts. The museum takes action against two patrons, while the teacher at the center of this says it's not enough. A blow to several local Special Olympians. Changes at an MIT gym that will soon leave them scrambling for a new place to train. Good morning. It is Saturday, May 25th. I'm Rondella Richardson. And I'm Jennifer Egan, along with Kellyanne Chickalise. And Mother Nature has timed things perfectly for us this yes. weekend. No complaints, really. Yeah, no, it's really going to be a great one for us. And although there's a few shower chances I'm tracking, the timing of them are just right. I do expect the first chance kicking in overnight tonight. For now, you're heading out, and this is what's greeting you, a live look in Boston, where we have a bright blue and clear sky to start. But the clear sky overnight allowed our temperatures to drop so layers needed this morning as we do have especially inland a lot of 40s to start right now in Concord it's only 40 degrees we have 44 in Norwood New Bedford also sitting at 44 as Boston is now sitting at 55 so quite a bit milder in the city but we do have that dew point of 44 which indicates it's going to be a low humidity day for us as we do eventually see those temperatures climbing into the 70s here one thing you'll notice the bright blue sky this morning will be covered with a few clouds this afternoon and eventually turning overcast as we move through the overnight with that potential for showers and storms developing. This is midnight tonight. You can see a few pop-ups and that continues through the overnight into early tomorrow morning. But I do expect some opportunities to get outside tomorrow. So stick around for that full timeline. Mandela Jennifer. Kellyanne, thank you. President Trump and the First Lady are in Japan this morning where they are the guests, the first state guests of the new emperor. President Trump will also be meeting with the prime minister. Our Matt Pritchard reports that they are expected to discuss trade and North Korea, among other topics. Jennifer and Rondella, some are describing this as a social call for the president. He's scheduled to golf with Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and even present a Trump Cup to a sumo wrestling championship. Uh, the president will also be the first head of state to meet with Emperor Naruhito, who assumed power May 1st. But behind all of that, though, are serious concerns for Japan. Uh, the looming threat of U.S. auto tariffs could be disastrous for the Japanese economy, not to mention the escalating feud with North Korea as the U.S. continues to negotiate the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Uh, President Trump is scheduled to return to Japan in just a few weeks. Uh, he'll be attending a summit for leading rich and developing nations. Uh, that's coming up in late June. In Washington, Matt Pritchard, WCVB News Center 5. Commitment 2020 coverage now, and Mayor Pete Buttigieg is in New Hampshire today for the second day of his two-day swing through that state. State, the mayor of South Bend, Indiana, drew a huge crowd at Exeter Town Hall last night. Almost 700 people packed inside and overflowed outside to see him. He spoke about how he plans to carry out his campaign against President Trump. Call out lies when we see them, call out wrongdoing when it happens, and then return to our core message about making sure that Americans have higher wages and more health care and a better standard of living so people know why it matters to them that they put us in instead of reelecting him. Well, today he has events in Concord and Keene. Right now, the Museum of Fine Arts banning two visitors who used racist language towards some students from Dorchester. The eye opener's Josh Brogadier is live with why some are not happy with the move. Josh? That's right, and those two visitors, by the way, were banned for life. Now, the teacher at the center of all this says this is not nearly enough. In fact, she's calling the MFA's response, quote, a whole bunch of lies. We have been working and are working and will work to, to do better. The deputy director of the Museum of Fine Arts once again apologizing and trying to make amends with Dorchester's Davis Leadership Academy after middle schoolers say they were victims of racial abuse during a trip last week. The museum released the results of an investigation banning two members who they say made racist comments to the kids, but no punishment for a staff member who allegedly told the students no watermelon. That staff are telling investigators they actually said no water bottles. I'm also confident that the staff member said what they say to every other group. That didn't sit well with teacher Marvelyn Lamby who said there's no doubt in her mind the word used was watermelon and that her students were followed around by security. I'm not surprised that the MFA is not taking accountability for any of their actions. The museum says they understand why the students felt the way they did, but that the security guards were simply leaving and returning from breaks. 
So it's a really tricky balance to make sure that the job of the guards, which is to keep the people and the art safe, um, doesn't create that kind of um, unwelcome environment. Officials say they're reviewing policies and procedures and that they've already had a meeting at the school and hope to return. But Lammy says a return trip to the MFA is not in the cards. Our kids have indicated that they have no interest in visiting the museum. It's a good reminder that um, even though we've made progress, we still have a lot of work to do. And full disclosure, Channel 5 is a media sponsor here at the Museum of Fine Arts. In Boston, Josh Brogadier, WCVB, News Center 5. Thank you, Josh. We continue to follow breaking news in Brockton, where a shooting is under investigation this morning. We're told one person was shot just before midnight on Highland Street. No word on that person's injury. So far, no arrests have been made. We'll bring you more information as it comes in. Peabody, Peabody police say the boy who claimed a man tried to abduct him has taken back his story. The nine-year-old had said that a man grabbed him near the Welch School on Tuesday night. Police say they have now closed their investigation. A Massachusetts priest who was defrocked for child sexual abuse is going to prison for a second time, this time in Maine. Yesterday, Ronald Paquin was sentenced to 16 years in prison for sexually abusing an altar board boy during trips to Maine in the 1980s. Paquin already served more than 10 years in prison in Massachusetts for sexually abusing another altar boy in that state. The last standing synagogue in Revere closed its doors. The synagogue held its final service last night. Temple B'nai Israel suffered from generations of members decline as many Jewish families moved out. The century-old building is being purchased by a Muslim group. There used to be three temples in the city before World War II. About a quarter of Revere's population was Jewish. A Pembroke roofing contractor stands accused of defrauding nearly 50 homeowners across the South Shore of more than $250,000. A Plymouth grand jury indicted Matthew Will yesterday. Will was arrested earlier this month. Prosecutors say he lied about the length of time he needed to finish the work and failed to pay his employees or vendors or For an independent contractor to review Wynn Resort's policy for an independent contractor to review Wynn Resort's policy changes. Encore Boston Harbor is supposed to open on June 23rd. That as Wynn Resorts continues to weigh whether to agree to fines and conditions issued by the commission or to file an appeal. The company has until May 31st to decide. The commission fined Wynn Resorts $35 million for its attempt to cover up sexual misconduct allegations against founder Steve Wynn. A fugitive wanted in Connecticut is not holding up his end of the bargain. That's after he said he would turn himself in for enough Facebook likes. We told you about Jose Sims earlier this week. He's wanted for seven failures to appear in court. Well, after Torrington police posted the mugshot of Sims, Sims messaged them agreeing to turn himself in for 15,000 Facebook likes. Well, it has surpassed that number at this point and still no sign of Sims. Police believe he is somewhere in New York. This morning, there is a controversy brewing at MIT over changes in the athletic program. As Sean Chayabat reports, it is leaving some Special Olympians feeling left out. Final days for gymnasts in their long-standing home. MIT soon turning this gym into a weight room, forcing out the MIT Gymnastics Club, a Cambridge community team, and special Olympics. Yeah, so my gymnastics. Tomorrow is gymnastics, yes, Abby. Sad news mom has yet to share with 18-year-old Abby, who's trained here for Special Olympics for 10 years. Not a lot of programs do this. And she loves it. You can see that. That's her accomplishment. This is what she worked for. An important part of her routine and a much needed outlet for adults with disabilities. And it's setting to the whole special mix community. I'm very concerned that we're not going to be able to find some place to go. Gymnastics needs a new home by July. MIT blames limited resources in crowded Cambridge. Recognizing it poses an unexpected hardship, MIT is in talks with someone interested in possibly developing a facility in the Cambridge area that could be used by our gymnastics club and other community groups, such as the Special Olympics. Until then, it's a last-minute scramble to find a new gym even harder for Special Olympians. There are other Special Olympics gymnastics programs in the state. The closest ones are an hour's drive. A petition swiftly gaining support, hoping it buys them time. This is literally hundreds of people, if not thousands, who care about this. In Cambridge, Sean Shiabot, WCBB News Center 5.
We held a special event here at our studios here in Needham. We partnered with the Red Cross to give back by hosting a blood drive yesterday. And the Red Cross says there is an urgent need right now for type O blood. But we took all types during the drive in our studio and dozens of people came out to donate. We surpassed our goal of 50 units of blood thanks to our generous donors here. We have wrapped things up, but you can still help. Log on to redcrossblood.org to find a blood drive near you. Missing for weeks and finally found safe. How a missing hiker survived on her own lost in the woods. Plus, it is Memorial Day weekend and the shark threat is growing on, along our coastline. What are Cape Cod officials doing to make their beaches safe? Well, Five Investigates examines the steps being taken. And where some diehard skiers have found snow this Memorial Day weekend. Kelly Ann, that's a sight we haven't seen in a while, and I think we're fine with that, right? Sunshine to start the day, and we do have a few shower chances I'm tracking here as we move through this long weekend. Timing it out coming up. Let's get outside right now. Lines look at Hampton Beach, where it is empty. This is a great day to head out, so this is a great time to perhaps get to the beach and pick your spot. We'll be warming up today and tomorrow. Show me the crown. Show me homecoming. Baby Sloth videos on YouTube. Amy, do you uh, mind giving someone else a turn? I got a pizza for Amy. Yes. Xfinity lets you search.